Welcome back everybody. This is Edwin the Magic Engineer and I just have a quick video I want to do with a couple updates. I'm going to talk about the current status of COPPA and what it means to this channel. I'm going to talk about the reserve list uh, price collapse that Rudy and some others have been talking about. And I'm also going to give you guys a little update on the live streams, uh, why I haven't been live streaming lately. So very quickly on the COPPA update, um, I did a video, video a bit ago. In fact, I'm going to link it right here. And that video that I did was informing people about like COPPA and that it's actually a threat for YouTube content creators. And I want to call out that I made that video at the much uh, before like many other COPPA videos were coming out when there was barely any information circulating around and people were still struggling trying to figure out what does this even mean, right? And I'm very happy to say since making that video, a lot of other information's come out. In fact, you guys are probably already fairly educated on it now at this point. But I just wanted to do a follow-up for anyone that's been watching my channel to kind of know where I'm at and that the facts of the matter has actually changed. What's effectively changed, I'm gonna make a long story short, is I don't think that my channel specifically is at threat and I don't think most other Magic the Gathering channels are really at threat of being demonetized and being fined and things like that. Most likely what's going to happen is the FTC is going to go after a couple very clearly child-focused content creators that are like, you know, very large subscriber base and they're not going to go for like these really small creators and... Um, all the little things that make mine not, you know, pretty clearly not child-based content. You know, the uh, the demographics of who actually watches my channel. I, I think I have like nobody, 13 to 17, that basically watches. And also, you know, the fact that Magic is for 13 and over and the fact that I do finance videos and stuff, like, I think I'm probably fine, which I'm very glad for. Um, but the COPPA thing is not over. There are, in fact, content creators that are losing their livelihood. And they're going to have to demonetize their channel and figure something else out. And that's really unfortunate, but that that's still that's still underway, right? Uh, specifically, like toy opening videos and any kind of anime stuff like that. A lot of stuff that kids like is probably going to end up going away. And it's really unfortunate. YouTube and, and the FTC, great job trying to protect kids. But, oh my gosh, you guys handled this so badly, right? So much wasted effort and thrash. But... Yeah, anyway, so my specific channel should be okay there. Now, about the whole reserve list thing. Uh, Rudy's been making a lot of videos talking about the reserve list prices collapsing. And, like, every, everyone's running around, like, all freaking out and stuff like that. There's been a lot of discussion on it. And I'll give you my, guy, my personal take. Um, I don't think we're in a reserve list price collapse. I think we're at the beginning of a consolidation phase. And I think in this consolidation phase, I think the weak hands are getting washed out. And uh, I'm going to put some math to it to kind of give you guys a sense of it. If you were to look at a card that was printed, like, you know, 300,000 copies of a certain rare that like a lot of people want. And then you look online and like in, in stores and say 20% of that market is for sale or 30% of that market. People are just liquidating, right? Maybe at some point even goes up to 50%. Crazy numbers, right? You're talking like 150,000 cards out of that 300,000 like suddenly being available and that price just coming down because everyone's getting out. That's a price collapse. If you have 300,000 cards and you have like five cards, 10 cards, hell, maybe 50 cards are for sale, you got to look at the ratios, right? If you have like 300,000 cards and 50 are for sale, then the overwhelming majority of people are just not selling. The people that are dumping it are probably the weekend speculators that borrowed money, invested. They didn't really want the card. They just bought them to basically go make a profit. And when they saw it was either going to go flat or go down for a bit, they're now exiting the market and they're chasing each other down. But the thing is, when say, say there's those 50 cards on the market. When they wash each other out and they all get sold, what you're left with is the other 290,000 uh 299,950 <laughs> that are all sitting there on the market, like not selling, like everyone's holding on to them, right? And once the inventory is gone, then there's just no supply. And then if people want them, we're going to have to pay the prices that the people who don't want to sell them are going to have to let them go for. So it's kind of like a little microclimate. It's like a, a little, like, it's like the world is a big place and there's this tiny little microclimate of people that are going, oh God, and they're trying to sell. And for them, the prices are coming down, right? 
And so certainly the prices aren't going to go up until that inventory is gone. So you're just basically waiting for the buyers to eventually come in and scoop those up. And like Rudy kept saying, like it would be very easy for a whale type investor to just come in and go and just soak them all up. And like, that's it. All that inventory is gone and everyone else that's holding wants to hold. You know, that could totally happen. So yeah, currently I see a consolidation phase. I don't see a price collapse. A price collapse will look like first a lot of cards coming into the market, thousands of cards. And then that price starts coming down, that's a collapse. Like that's when that's gonna happen. I don't see that. So anyways, um, then that's the reserve list, my, my basic take on that. Now, uh, the last topic, why haven't I been doing live streams? Well, I haven't been doing live streams basically because Spectrum internet sucks and I cannot get good internet bandwidth. Now, in fact, I'm actually gonna show you a live test. Let's cut over to it right now. So this is a live test running on my network in my house. Now, mind you, I have gigabit LAN going all over my house. So I could transfer at massive speeds and I'm paying for a 400 megabit per second uh, connection is what I'm supposed to be getting at the maximum. And you can see I'm peaking out right here around at the moment 80. Sometimes it goes up to 400 for my download, but it's not download that's the problem. It's really not. The problem that I'm having is completely related actually to, um, it's related to the upload speed. And actually, let me show you that because now the upload, yeah, the upload test is going now. You can see this. I'm getting, what, 2.7 megabits per second? Well, for a good HD stream, video stream, you need like 5 to 8 megabits per second at least. Probably at least over 8, you know, to have like good HD video stream. And I'm paying $90 a month to get 400 down and 20 up. And this nonsense is all that I'm getting. Just this garbage. Okay, that's done now. And I've got 2.72 megabits per second is all that I'm getting. It's pathetic. So I've complained and I've had a tech out four times in my house. And what happens is every time like I call Spectrum, I tell them they... I'm having a bandwidth issue. They first try to like blame you and say like, do this, reset your router. Like, and I'm like, you guys have done all that. So they're like, well, we have to send a tech to your house. And I tell them every time, like, don't send a tech. It's not my house. And like, you, you already had a tech. So they're like, well, that's the process. So they send a tech out. He wastes 40 minutes verifying all over my house. Then my house is not the issue. Then he goes out and starts testing the internet, like out in the street. And when he's testing the internet out in the street, he sure enough verifies, oh, even right here, I'm seeing terrible bandwidth. And I'm like, duh, right? So then at the end of the call, and again, this is four times now, they say, well, we're going to have to get a level two tech to go look at this. So they make a phone call and they say, okay, a level two technician is going to investigate and resolve it. Try again in a couple days. And in a couple days, I try again and like nothing's different, right? So I just can't get my internet bandwidth up and the live streams are going to be terrible until I can because they're going to constantly get that buffering issue. So that's why, you know, that's what's going on with that. So I'm fighting Spectrum. So call them and tell them that they suck because Spectrum does suck. So anyways, yeah, that's the updates, guys. Um, I will be making more videos, especially when this Christmas break comes up because I'll be having a lot of time off. So I'll see all of you then. Have a great day. Bye.